People often comment, they say, Jen, your husband is so supportive of your career. And he really is because he doesn't want to work anymore. (laughs) I have a theory that on a deep caveman level, it is very important to men to be the primary providers for their wives and children for about 15, 20 years, and then they're out. I see these young wives on Instagram who are like, my husband completely provides financially for our entire family because for us, it's a sacred journey. I'm like, girl, you're in a relay race. You just don't know it. That man's gonna hit his 43rd birthday, run up to you, throw the baton at you, be like, this is your problem now, I'm out. This was surprising to me because my husband went to Yale. When I was dating him, I thought, man, if I can just get a ring on it, the minute we say I do, poof, all of my financial problems disappear. Single ladies, I need to inform you. Men have discovered work-life balance. So if that's the plan you want to get on, you're going to need to go for old money. A couple years ago, he sat me down and he said, Jen, you stayed home with our children for so many years. Let it be my turn now. I said, okay, so I stayed home with them when they were a bunch of screaming gremlins. Now you're willing to stay home with them when they are a jovial brood of free bartenders and chauffeurs. And we got a lot of kids, so he's got like two dedicated kids just to make his queso. You know when I should have known this was coming? A while back, he started sending me a lot more girl boss memes on Instagram. It would be like, Girls can do anything. Careers are for girls. A girl could support six kids while her husband goes sailing with his friend Scott. I was like, is he making these? I, I will say he is a very frugal man. So much so that he convinced our children that there's a very special elf at the North Pole. This elf is in charge of quality control. And he puts his special bright orange little sticker on only the finest toys. And his name is Clarence. The kids would open their toys at Christmas and he'd be like, oh, darn it, did they misspell Clarence's name again? (laughs) Ha ha, oh. But Clarence is killing it. He is almost as good as the Easter Bunny's assistant rollback. (sighs) He's like, these guys are incredible. I learned the hard way, do not let your very frugal spouse get gifts for the tooth fairy to give. My daughter had lost a tooth. It was time to set out the tooth fairy gifts. And I said, all right, what did you get? I knew it would be something from the discount bin at Walmart. (laughs) So he pulls out his bag. The first thing he has in there, I I, I swear to you this is true. Hand on my Bible app, I swear. (laughs) It's a floppy rubber rat. I I had so many questions, starting with, like, where does the market demand for this product come from? (laughs) You know, who was like, our home is not complete without... I I don't know. I was like, okay, what else did you get? So he pulled out a bottle that had liquid in it. And I said, oh, is it a fragrance? He said... (laughs) Sort of. (laughs) 
It was deer lore. Deer come to our neighborhood and my daughter likes to see them. And he's like, look, check it out. It says authentic female deer urine guaranteed to attract a mate. Kind of genius, right? I said, I, I just have to take a moment. Um, so this is where our house is now. The tooth fairy is bringing pee. And it's for hunters. So on the back, there was a picture of an angry buck with rifle crosshairs over his little deer face. I said, this is literally the worst tooth fairy gift in the world. But it was 11 p.m. and I didn't have any better ideas. So that is what we left. Imagine my daughter rolling over that morning. She's like, oh, what did the, oh, like, it's, she sees what looks like a dead rat and a bottle of animal urine with a deer that's about to be shot on it. I don't think she thought the tooth fairy came. I think she thought the mafia came. When we had just two kids, uh, we moved into this tiny little home, 1,900 square feet, Three tiny little bedrooms, a little starter home. And as our family grew and grew, I realized I'm the only one who ever considered it a starter home. (laughs) We now have six kids, a huge dog, and a cat. And we could adopt 15 more kids and 20 more pets. And my husband would not let us get a bigger house. (laughs) We bought that thing in 2007 when housing prices were at rock bottom. I will celebrate my 100th birthday in that house. He is never upgrading. And um, he tries to get in my head with this. He says, Jen, studies show that having a small per person square footage actually leads to optimum family engagement. Studies show this. I'm like, studies from where? The Mother Hubbard Institute for Living in a Shoe? (laughs) 